All right, hopefully I got this audio going. Let's just double check settings here. I do see that it's happening. Is it, is it using the right mic? Let's see, settings, mic. Yes, it is. All right. All right, time to put some picture on this, baby. <clears throat> hey, um, today, today I want to talk about uh, different business types and how uh, subscription or recurring revenue models can actually really work for your business. Um, forgive the uh, weird intro. I was double checking that the audio was working. I did a whole live stream uh a couple weeks ago where I forgot to actually enable the audio, which meant I had to redo it. So, um, yeah, so today specifically, I wanted to talk about some various examples. I'm very big on recurring revenue. Um, I think it's important. I also wonder if I can flip this screen. Preset. Oh, why does it have my quality so low? Let's try this. Now I'm huge. We'll get back to we'll get back to this uh, regularly regularly scheduled deal here in a second. Let's get this moved into the right place. That really cuts off my. That's okay. You don't need to see too much of the sides either. I don't know if that. Maybe it's just on my end, but this looks very washed out. And I have a decent camera here too. Let me. Let me try something here. Definitely want to make sure if I'm recording that things look good. So let's rub over the camera a couple times. It might be a little better. <clears throat> okay, back to what I was saying. So talking about uh, uh, subscription revenue, um, uh, recurring revenue models, one of the things that I run into when chatting with, with potential clients, even with some of my existing clients, is an inability to see the revenue models in what they do. Um, a lot of times your recurring revenue model is going to be not necessarily your main product. Now, when I worked in coffee, our main product, coffee, and our main sales venue was through recurring revenue models. So it was really easy for us to see that. Um, and, and a lot of the coffee clients I work with, it's also very easy for them to see that because their main product is recurring revenue. But what if, what if you sell, uh, what if you're a gun shop and you sell guns online? Now I know not everybody, uh, is keen on the whole gun discussion, but let's, let's just use this as an example so you can think through things. Um, if you sell guns online, you're probably not going to sell guns on a subscription. There may be a few wealthy enough people who just want to have a new gun every month. But more often than not, even those people want to pick the specific models and calibers and everything else that they want. So you're not going to be able to sell guns on subscription. It's going to be a rough business model. However, what do guns need to work? Well, you need ammo, right? You can't shoot a gun without any, without ammo. And for gun enthusiasts who go out to the range and, and you know practice firing, they can burn through quite a bit of ammo, and they're going to need more on a you know semi regular basis. So you could set up a you know monthly subscription, a six month subscription, even an annual subscription where you drop you know a large case of ammo on on the potential client. Um, other things with guns, you need to be able to clean them. With that, there's lubricant necessary. Um, and that lubricant gets used. Not a big product, not something you're going to make a lot of money on, but setting up a subscription, maybe including that, some ammo, uh, maybe maybe some, some cleaning cloths, um, those types of things, thinking outside of your specific product and more about the surrounding products is where you can make money on recurring revenue. So I made a little list here. I'm going to grab my phone. Um, have it on my phone here. I don't know why I want to see myself. I could just pull it up on my computer screen, but it's a little easier this way. So yeah, I kind of jumped the gun on the ammo thing because that's a great example. Um, you know, I uh, recently made a purchase uh, for myself and I did a whole lot of research. And with that, uh, you know, I'm going to have to buy ammo on a somewhat regular basis. I won't be a big 
a big user, but I will go out to the the shooting range every so often and practice and and you know try to get better at using it and learn my gun safety better and just continually refine you know how how good I am at it. Um, and so with that. Uh, having an option, which these exist, there are options out there for, for ammo on subscription. Having that option could be a really good idea. You know, initially here, uh, since it's my first one in 20 years, uh, it'll be a while before I know what my usage is like. But once I do know what my usage is like, um, it will be a no brainer, um, just to have it come. If the price is right and the service is there, no brainer on the subscription. So let's talk about some other options, right? So that's, that's ammo. I have a client um, that uh, I thought this was a strange revenue model, but it actually works. Um, and it's really not that strange. It just was something that hadn't really occurred to me is they have a apparel company specifically dealing with shirts. So they do V-neck and standard t-shirts. They do um, long sleeve. They do Henleys. Um, they uh, have sweatshirts. They have jackets and hoodies and um they their their t-shirts are inexpensive enough and also in demand enough that they found that that having a subscription available for those t-shirts is getting sales for them on a recurring basis they'll have people who get three t-shirts a month uh shipped to them now if you think about how much uh people spend on clothing it you know you know at 20 ish dollars a shirt but when you buy three it's now fifty dollars um, I, that might not be exactly the same price, but it's in that, that ballpark. It's a good deal to the person who's buying and they're getting nice new clothes all the time. Now, the, the funny thing is, is the shirts are high quality. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing one of them right now. They're high quality and they last a very long time. Um, so I guess at some point you would probably have a little, little bit too much, uh, shirts, but you know, it, it's a really interesting model and it's working for them. They found that, that their customers like to get shirts on a regular basis. Now, monthly may be a bit much for some people. For me, I, I don't buy clothing very often, but when I do, I want the, want something nice. And so if I find that I need to get new t-shirts every, you know, every year, maybe I'd set, I'd set up a subscription for every six months. And then rather than buying a whole bunch on a yearly basis to replace my older ones, I can get a few in six months and then a few in six months and keep that going. Um, it, it's, it's, once again, an interesting business model, one that, you know, even me living in the recurring revenue world, I probably didn't think it, think about it too much, um, but it, it's it's there. Um, other products in apparel, like under underwear, um, people need to get new underwear every so often. Having a, a refreshed line of underwear is, is, is nice. Um, socks. I, I, I'm pretty gentle on my stuff, and yet I somehow seem to wear my socks out uh, somewhat frequently. Um, I just recently picked up some thicker socks from Duluth. They're very nice. So far, I haven't worn a hole in them. And they, they, you know, they're, they're right now getting to about the age where, I shouldn't say recently, I picked them up about a year ago, a year and a half ago. Um, but they're right now getting about to the age where I'd start finding holes and they seem to be holding up really well. But they're also expensive. So if you wanted to buy cheaper socks, but just replenish those, a subscription would work perfectly for a business selling socks. Um, you know, and same with the, with other parts of apparel, you know, pants, which I haven't talked about, and jackets, you know, maybe you get an annual jacket um, that, that just arrives and uh, in time for the winter season, um, maybe a windbreaker annually as well. Uh, people spend a lot of money on clothes, a lot more than I do. Um, and being able to tap into that, you're you're giving a convenience. Uh, you know, as I always say, with subscription. It's it's a two way street. You're providing convenience and often a discount to the purchaser, and they're providing <clears throat> a more or less guaranteed revenue stream. Yes, they can cancel and quit, but you get enough people, and the amount of cancellations don't really hurt you that much unless something goes drastically wrong. So some other things, um, food, food products. Uh, this is actually, you know, the, as a coffee guy, this is in my wheelhouse. But there's so much outside of coffee. I mean, people consume all sorts of foods on a regular basis. So, for example, um, Jimmy John's is is a you know, if you're not familiar with Jimmy John's, they're 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 huge. They're a uh, uh, sub company where you go in and get a big sandwich made. 
um, they're kind of known for simplicity and speed. You, 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 you order a sub, they get it done quickly. Like It's not like Subway where you go through the line and they pick your toppings. And if you like that, which a lot of people do, it's a more custom experience. And yes, with Jimmy John's, you can customize as well, but it's not intended to be that way. They're all about quality, speed, and simplicity, really is what it comes down to. Well, what if you had a you know sub of the month club where maybe uh, you can come in four times a month, so once a week on general on average, once a week, uh, get a sub and a drink and a bag of chips, and walk out the door with those, and it's all part of your club that you paid, you know, whatever the right price is for monthly. Um, people eat and people often eat out. Uh, Especially for lunch, when you're when you're working, you know some people bring box or bag lunches, but will often eat out as well. And some people just eat out. Um, there, there's enough people that that would appeal to. It would appeal to me. I like Jimmy John's. So the ability for me to walk into a Jimmy John's and say, "Hey, uh, here's my my uh, club card," or you know, here here's the app. They use the app a lot, which is good because I hate carrying cards. You know, here's my app. Scan my app. I'm a club member. And uh, I'm due up for my my you know free meal of the month or of the week and um, yeah scan it and, and make my meal and let me head out um, also with placing orders online so that's one way some other ideas uh, honey I saw I've recently uh, attempted to chat with a guy who uh, who sells honey um, I've actually chat, chatted with a couple other honey sellers in the past. And it's interesting because especially when they're small, because most, most of these honey sellers are small, unless you're, you know, owned by a big company and you're in the grocery stores, you're typically pretty small. And they want to sell more, but they don't know how. So a lot of them go to street fairs or to um, uh, markets and, and all these things, or even in their very local grocery stores, their smaller grocery stores, put their honey on the shelf and they, they sell a little bit. And they hear from their, the people who try it how much they love this delicious fresh honey from, you know, a specific honey. Uh, I guess it's a farm. I'm not sure what you call it. But that's it. And then they work the same venues and those people will come back sometimes, but often also buy honey in the grocery store because it's there. It's cheap. It's quick. Well, what if what if that, that honey seller, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? Uh, what if that specialty honey seller all of a sudden said, hey, I'm glad you love my honey. Look, we know we're a little more expensive, but our honey is higher quality. You can taste it. And it's, you know, maybe it's organic, maybe, you know, whatever else. Subscribe. We'll, sh- we'll send you honey. You know, most people use this much honey a month. Um, yeah, I make a little hand, hand gesture like that means anything. But most people use a little bit of honey a month. So let's get you on a three-month cycle. And every three months, we'll send you this full-size container of honey for you to enjoy at home. Um, You know, with our price, uh, when you subscribe, our price is the same, but shipping is included. Or maybe we have to charge shipping to make it work, but we'll save you 10% on the cost of the honey. You know, always finding a way, because just subscribing, you'll get those people, but you need that hook for those people who are like, hey, I'll just buy it because I'm not really saving anything. I'll just buy it from you when I need it. That's what you want to avoid because when they just buy it from you when they need it, that's when you lose the sale ultimately because at some point they forget, at some point they run out and you eventually lose. And yes, they may come back, but the, the goal is to keep them keep them there. So honey's honey's one example. Uh, heading over to the phone again to re- refresh my mind. Uh, oh, yes. Vegetables. So I didn't have a part of this as much as I'd like to claim, but back in Washington, uh, in where in the town where my office was, uh, near where I lived, there was a local produce company that actually grew pretty decent size for the area. Um, they were delivering as far south as I think Seattle, maybe even further south. Um, we were about an hour and a half drive north of Seattle, and they were heading up almost to the Canadian border, delivering vegetables and in a you know some sort of a radius of that. Um, the, the, the produce was pretty good. They brought in, you know, certain produce from, from some places that they didn't have. Um, but that always adhered to this quality standard that they'd set. And they, they made it to where you could subscribe to what they called a box of good. Um, 
my, my family, we subscribed to it. It was actually really useful. The vegetables were fresh, better than the grocery store, m- more often than not. And um, it caused us to use more vegetables and eat healthier, which was also a good thing for us. Um, the pricing was a little more than if we'd bought it in the grocery store, but the quality was typically a lot more. And once again, the, the forcing us to eat more vegetables was a good thing. We also tried some things that um, we'd never tried before. One was a Oh, was it called a broccolini? It was, it was basically a broccoli that looks like a triangular top. It was it was written little bumps all over. And it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. And for some people, that may be a normal thing. For us, we'd never tried that. And it was like, wow, this is super cool. Something new and weird looking. It looked like an alien vegetable. But tasted you know tasted like really delicious broccoli. And um, it was just a really fun thing to be a part. Now, of course, when we moved here, we had to cancel um, because... Uh, Unfortunately, they don't deliver out to Iowa. But, um, you know, there's something there. If you grow vegetables and produce and you're constantly trying to figure out a way to sell them, you know, work, you know, and with all of these, a lot of it is that that grassroots work that that these small businesses are already doing. And you know, once again, the honey seller, the vegetable seller, um, you're, you're, you're typically doing like street fairs and, and marketplaces and stuff. You're still going to do that. But what you can do now is convert that 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 moment where the customer goes, wow, this is delicious, you convert that into recurring sales on the back end. And so, yeah, so so that just kind of plays into that. So the last uh, example on the food side, um, and, and this doesn't really apply to me currently because we actually just bought a half cow, but if you're not a vegetarian and you eat meat, um, you know, there are these meat boxes. And there's a couple, you know, bigger named meat boxes um, I haven't actually tried them out, to be honest, uh, but it's not like this. None of these things are new. These are all being done, but these are examples uh, for you to think about for your business on how you could potentially create a revenue, uh, a recurring revenue model um, that you maybe aren't looking at. So yeah, with meat, you know, you can get like the cuts you want, maybe some 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 beef, maybe some um, bacon and sausage, maybe some chicken, and get it shipped to your house on a regular basis. You know, if you're not a vegetarian, chances are you eat a lot of meat. Um, you know, our family has generally been pretty big on chicken, mostly because it's kind of hard to go bad with chicken. It's less expensive and it goes in all sorts of stuff. Um, we recently, like I mentioned earlier, recently just bought a half cow. So we've got freezer full of beef now and various cuts of beef. Um, but that said, if we had a local option where we didn't have to invest in a full half a cow and the price wasn't, you know, the price is obviously going to be a little bit more, but if the price wasn't too bad, you know, we'd probably be, would have been more apt to, to doing that rather than some, you know, national um, option just because of the way our family is. We like to support local business as much as possible. Um, so with that, that's another option for this. So now moving on from food, um, got two more, two more, three more, four more, four more things heading in here. Uh, moving on from food is flowers. So, um, you know, 1-800-Flowers uh, kind of redefined the whole flower market with the ship you flowers in a box. I'd actually done that a couple times. Um, it was strangely worked out really well, but I'd heard some horror stories about that. Um, but then they also contract with other flower shops to fulfill orders as well. I don't know if they're still doing the box shipping of flowers anymore. I think it's all contracted, but they've kind of pioneered that path. Um, I have heard of subscription flower services, although I cannot think of an example off the top of my head. Um, oh, what do you know? Chat GPT thought of examples for me. Um, there's something called Bloomsy Box, um, B-L-O-O-M-S-Y Box, um, which will send fresh flowers on a weekly, bi-weekly or monthly basis. Um, I mean, that's just really cool because there are certain women and, and there's a gal I know um, who's a friend, a close friend of ours who grows flowers and kind of had this idea as well. There are people who like to have fresh flowers in their home. And the, the, the problem with fl- fresh flowers is they die. Um, they only last so long. And so if you want to... Uh, Let's see here. I got to turn my don't disturb back on so that I'm not seeing all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, sorry. If you want fresh flowers in your house, you need to have uh, you either need to run to the store over and over and over to get fresh flowers, or have a flower delivery service take care of that for you. Um, 
one of the the, the potential uh, bonuses to doing it on a subscription is there's more opportunity, especially if it's like a local company doing delivery, there's more opportunity for savings in the long run rather than just buying them one up. And for the flower company, there's more opportunity to offer savings to get more work, um, you know, similar to a lot of these others, but with flowers, there, there's, there's more room there for that. Um, yeah, so there's the flower model, I think is a, is a really cool, um, probably under thought of idea. Obviously there's an example that I was unaware of. Um, and the, once again, this gal is actually the, the reason I even had this thought process because she was thinking about trying to do something like that. Um, next, uh, if you are, if you have an HVAC company, um, you know, potentially, you are, you know, installing HVAC units, servicing HVAC units for, for your you know, various homes for your clients uh, in, in your area. Um, one of our HVAC companies actually hit me with the recurring model that I was like, oh, that's super cool. Um, and, and this may be more common than I'm aware, but this was the first time, you know, I'm 42 and this is the first time I'd heard of this. Um, and that was that they will come out twice a year to do uh, an inspection slash, um, you know, kind of slap you on the wrist, at least for us, uh, service of how to upkeep and, and make sure that everything is maintained and running well. Um, you know, and slap us on the wrist because we use our uh, utility room in the basement. We also use it as a homeschool room and we kind of crowd that more than we should. And they're like, no, you shouldn't do this. Um, but that said, you know, I'm looking out the window over here. You, you can't see what I'm looking at, but my, my, uh, uh, HVAC, the AC unit is just sitting right outside here and I can see it. Um, my office is, you know, next to my house and they actually would come out and inspect that unit and, you know, check through the, the, the various components to make sure that it isn't going to fail, um, at least to the best of their ability, that it's not going to fail us through the winter, that it's not going to fail us through the summer, um, that it will run optimally. Now we're fortunate ours is new, newish. We bought the house new. And um, so we're probably, hopefully, quite a few years away from having to deal with problems. But the fact that they check that and then they go down into the utility room and check the, the furnace and um, there's an element of uh, comfort to knowing that, hey, they're checking on us, things are running well, we don't have to worry about anything. And also an element of comfort to if there's a problem, hopefully with you know two or three checks through the year, three checks through the year, they're going to find that problem and let us know uh, before it's an actual problem, you know, before it's negative 10 degrees and the heater won't kick on. So it's a really cool service for a company that what they really do is install and service HVAC units. This is more of a preemptive maintenance um, to ensure that we run into less problems. And by doing this, they could catch potentially bigger problems that would cost us a lot of money in the future. So once again, you got to look at what your business is and think, how can I offer something that's of value to the customer, but also of value to me because I'm able to do it on a recurring basis? Um, okay, two more, two more. So this next one I have, I have some, quite a bit of personal experience with, um, uh, both from a, a client perspective as well as me being a client perspective. And that's with a, a chiropractic massage wellness type um, businesses. You know, being a chiropractor or a masseuse is great. Um, you know, the, the, the ones I've always gone to seem to always be very busy, um, seem to you know, you'd have to book a minimum of, uh, at least with the massage. I, I, I used to be a big massage user um, before I lost weight. And with massage, you, you almost always have to book at least a month out because they're just filled up. Because if they do know what they're doing, people are using them because it helps alleviate pain. Um, you know, in my case, I'd always go for the deep tissue because I would have back problems and they'd be able to get way down deep to where those back problems stem from. Um, but I would go on a recurring basis. <clears throat> um, I was going monthly for a couple years of my life. And uh, I was always in that struggle to, all right, they're booked up on this day next month. So I guess we'll do this day. And then having to put it on my calendar and figure it out versus, you know, my favorite is to be able to put once on the calendar and have it recur over and over because I know it's just going to land on this day at this time every single month. Well, when we moved to Iowa, um, the the massage place I use right off the get go had a had a recurring uh, 
deal where you saved a little bit of money and basically guaranteed them that I would be back on a regular basis. I loved it. It was perfect for me because I didn't have the rigmarole. I saved a little bit of money, but even if it was the same, I probably would have done it um, because it was just something that, one less thing to worry about. And for them, it was like, hey, this guy's going to be back next month. Cool. Um, you know, generally, obviously, uh, with time and getting a little bit healthier, or getting quite a bit healthier and more in shape, um, my back problems have seemed to have gone away and I'm not going any longer. But there are people who like them for comfort too, not just for therapy. Um, people like them just because they feel good and relaxes them. And, and if that's the case, then that's also a perfect use of this subscription. Now, that's more on the massage size. For chiropractors, um, when, when they find a problem, they'll often say, and, and this is my experience, you go in and you're like, oh, my back's killing me. Can you... Yeah. Oh, yes, I see the problem. They do the work and you're like, oh, that feels so much better. And they're like, great, now we need a maintenance plan. Now, for the jaded, they'll say, yeah, it's because they're just trying to get more money out of you. But if you actually believe in a chiropractor, which I go both ways, it depends on the moment. I've, I've definitely had chiropractors work well for me. Um, some friends of mine back in Washington um, were, were great chiropractors. Um, but I, you know, when I was going through certain pain, I would have to go back every couple weeks to kind of get a readjustment type period, or actually it might've been every week at one point. So with that, setting up a subscription plan saying, look, you're coming in today, you're having back problems, your back problems may not go away. And until they do, you might want to just consider setting up a monthly or bi-weekly or whatever chiropractic visit. You know, normally we charge this much, but on subscription, we actually charge this much. You just have to prepay for maybe two or three visits. You know, depending on depending on how your business works, there may need to be a little bit of a commitment to get the discount. But with that, you set up that recurring revenue model, and now your client is coming back to you. Unlike what I would do is get kind of cheap and try not to spend the money and then wait until the pain's much worse and then show back up. And they're like, yeah, we told you to come back. And it's like, yeah, I know. Um, you know, getting them there in the moment when you've just shown them how you make them feel better, getting them to sign up and join, that's that's the value right there. So any kind of wellness type thing, you know, um, I, I know that same chiropractor in Washington, they, uh, they worked quite a bit with, um, one second here. That's a client right there, Fidalgo Coffee. I recommend them too, it's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> sorry, distracted myself, I needed coffee. Uh, what I say? Oh, they work with nutrition. Um, so they had some some various like nutritional things you could purchase. Um, they had various, uh, not, not exercise, but like back stretch out and type things to help you with your back. I know because I own a couple of them now, thanks to them helping me. Um, they had, uh, uh, oh, what's that stuff? Biofreeze. Back when it was not easy to find in stores, they were carrying it. Um, a bunch of different things. And so with that, those are also all products that are very easy to throw on a subscription. Um, and if people, you know, for example, I would go through Biofreeze uh, every so often. And so maybe I would get a couple bottles of Biofreeze every six months. Um, it would be a great subscription option. Okay, last one for today is a vehicle, vehicle maintenance. So, right, we, we all own cars, or well, not all, but but a good chunk of us own cars. A good chunk of us own multiple cars. Um, you know, we've got two, but I'm very soon to have kids who are gonna be uh, driving ages. And with that, we all have various things we have to do with our cars. So, for example, my car, uh, I'm fortunate in that I only have to get an oil change once a year based on the amount that I drive. Um, I, I don't know if this is like a new vehicle. I've, I've, I don't, this is the newest vehicle I've ever owned and it's a 2014. So it's, I'm not like a, uh, I'm, I'm not up to what the current vehicles are like. So maybe this is pretty common, but, but, but before I used to have to get an oil change like every three months. And so what's also nice is the nearest dealership, uh, is in Iowa city, which is about an hour and 45 minute drive from me. So I, I don't want to go down there every three months if I can help it. So with that though, they know that I got to be there once a year. And this is a place I think they could learn from because what'll happen with dealerships, especially 
Um, it's once people start getting older vehicles, um, they tend, and, and there's a whole nother group that trusts the dealer, not at all anyhow. But as your vehicle gets older, you tend to be less inclined to take it to the dealer because you know the dealer's prices are typically going to be more expensive than if you find an independent person. Um, and so you eventually go, eh, I'm going to go find an independent person to take care of this. And that's where dealers can often lose business over the years is not necessarily from people getting new vehicles that maybe they go to a different dealership for, although that does happen, but it's also just from, you know, I don't know that the value of taking my vehicle all the way an hour and 45 minutes is there when I've got a guy, you know, who's 10 minutes down the road who could potentially work on this. Um, so for, you know, for a car dealership, whether it's a big, you know, a big dealership or a small dealership is to offer service plans on subscription. Um, and how that looks can really, really vary uh, depending on your clientele, your cars. Um, but oftentimes, you know, I would include uh, things like your your um, your uh, uh, oil changes, your maintenance, um, th- you know, bigger things. You know, for example, my car has, uh, uh, I'm going to eventually need to get something done, um, but it's, you know, a couple thousand dollars and I'm really not wanting to do it. Uh, my engine has these, I don't know if they're shock absorbers or what, but something to basically keep it from rattling in the car. Um, and as the car is getting older, they're rubber and they're starting to deteriorate. And I can definitely feel a little bit of shaking now, whereas before it was like buttery smooth. Um, to me, it's, you know, as long as it's not damaging the car, I'll probably live with it for a while because it's, it's enough money I don't want to spend. Um, but it is something that I will eventually probably have to do if I keep the car that long. And, um, you know, as well as other things, you know, I'm going to have to change the, the serpentine belt next time I go. And, you know, that's a few hundred dollars and I'm going to have to change, uh, there's some gaskets that are, that are getting old and that's a few hundred dollars. Everything costs stupid money. But if you're the dealer, you know, you need to find a way to make that more palatable for your customers. And so there are some dealers who have started going to subscription cars. I know Volvo has tried that. Um, I don't know if it's available in the US, but um, they actually have a subscription service where you can get a Volvo. A Volvo, And with that, you get insurance and uh, all the maintenance as part of your monthly rental fee of sorts. Um, it's kind of like a, a cross between a rental and a lease, but it includes everything else. So you basically have a one-stop shop with Volvo. Um, but for, you know, in my case, I have an Audi. In my case, if the Audi dealership were to say, hey, Dan, um, here's what you're going to have to do. Why don't you sign up for a subscription? Um, the subscription is, you know, uh, let's say 50 bucks a month. So that comes to 600 bucks a year. And with that, we'll you get your oil change and you also, you know, that extra money goes into, I don't know, an account for repairs on your vehicle. Now for some people like myself, it's not a big deal because I keep that money aside anyhow, but there's a lot of people who have a hard time financing in $2,000 out of nowhere. And, and a lot, a lot of people that have a hard time doing that. And, and I've been one of those people. So I understand this. And so sometimes that monthly thing can actually add up to be a massive value because they're just planning on that monthly leaving. And so when the time comes where they need to now spend $2,000, their account may have $1,800 in it and they can now top it off and finish the repair that they need. Now, I don't know about the legality of that. It's just an idea. Uh, None of these are necessarily meant to be, you should do this if you're this business, but to constantly think through different ways that you can create recurring revenue models for your business uh, is super important. And it will help your business thrive if you can come up with really good ideas. Um, You know, once again, going back to my coffee experience, I've tried to keep this one less coffee centric because I know I hit coffee a lot. It's my, it's, I mean, it's still like, you know, I'm drinking coffee in the middle of the stream. Um, It's still like a massive important part of my life, but it's also really a key player in what I'm talking about. And that's that, yep, there goes my phone. That's that if you, if you have a business where you can work recurring revenue in at the core, your business can do a whole lot better, especially if your product is good. Because the biggest 
the biggest thing for a business is not to necessarily convince the customer to try and like your product. It's to convince them to continue to try and like your product. Um, I know that there's the old saying, it's a lot harder to gain a new customer than to keep an existing customer. And that is true. But keeping that existing customer interested can actually be quite a challenge too, no matter how good your product is. And so with subscription models, you keep them interested through convenience and through quality. And so if you've got those two things in alignment, the sky's the limit with your business. And you can just continue to move forward and gain new clients and obviously take care of them, but they don't need the, oh, hey, purchase again. Oh, hey, purchase again. Hey, here's a new deal. Please purchase. Please purchase. Like, Yes, there will still be an element of that follow-up, but it will be a completely different scenario because they're already going to purchase. They're already on a subscription with you. Now you just want to add extra value. You don't want to beg for more purchases. And that's why I'm passionate about subscription and, and recurring revenue models and why I'm always trying to push that on anybody who watches this. So I think that's it. I'm going to have another drink of coffee. This is, a, by the way, this is not a paid sponsorship. Nobody watches, so I don't think anybody will care. But this is a Fidalgo Coffee Roasters. Um, it's FidalgoCoffee.com. And I'm drinking the Decaf Organic. It's a medium dark. Now, I tend to be a light roast drinker. I like light, wild flavored coffee. I like it, I like it rich. I don't like weak coffee. But I like the roast to be lighter. And I make it very strong, and I like the wild. But... This is a delicious, don't think about it too much coffee, just it tastes good. It's decaf. I'm pretty naturally caffeinated, and for health reasons, I've gone very low on the caffeine that I take now. Um, and my wife likes this. They, they also have an organic decaf, which I love. It's, it's a medium light roast, uh, but my wife, uh, she likes the darker, so I, I compromise so we can both enjoy this together. So yeah, if you're uh, if you've watched it this far and you're interested, once again, Fidalgo, F-I-D-A-L-G-O Coffee.com. Um, Wapiti built their website. We actually do quite a bit of maintenance for them on that, um, as well as helping them grow. You can actually see a living example on their website of how we can build a uh, recurring revenue uh, subscription service. Um, and if you are so inclined to actually sign up. You can see the whole back end, the processes, the ability to make changes on a whim to your order. Um, yeah, this is turning into a promo for Fidalgo, but it's really not about them. Um, I'm wanting to more specifically show, talk about what we can do. And Fidalgo's is a great example. Um, you know, the ability to click a button and say, I want my next shipment now, uh, to be able to enter a date as to when you want your next shipment to go, um, to be able to say, skip a shipment because I've got too much. Like there's all these little fine tuned granular controls so that you don't have to feel roped into something. And next thing you know, you've got 20 bags of coffee at home. As a matter of fact, a real life example, I am subscribed to them for their decaf. Um, fortunately, uh, as a client, I get a great deal through them. But um, I just, just like a week ago, I got another box and I still had a couple bags because during the <clears throat> during the late summer months, it normally cooled up. It normally cools up every year, but this year it was just hot for so long, and I, I was just wasn't drinking as much coffee. Um, we we go through quite a bit, so not drinking as much is still a lot for a lot of people. But um, we ended up having uh, four two pound bags, so we had eight pounds of coffee just stacked up, and it was like okay. I need to do something about this. So I was actually able to go use the system that we built uh, personally and really enjoy how it worked for me. I was able to delay the shipment. Um, I actually skipped the next shipment and uh, my coffee arrived. And um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm catching up now. I think my coffee didn't arrive. I skipped the next shipment, sorry. My coffee arrived that triggered that whole process. So uh, then I skipped the next shipment and now uh, it's looking like I might need to speed it up about a week, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm heading back into to a normal zone here. And it's all just really easy controls through the website for the user to do. So with that, I think that's all I wanted to chat about. The fun thing about live stream is I can kind of just veer off and do things. And uh, my, my social media team that takes the cuts of this, they are good at cutting out the stupid things I do. So mm. 
I guess I'll end it with a uh, with a goat scream. And uh, if you're watching, thank you and uh, take care.